Hi guys, hope you're doing all right. I am doing okay. I am going to have my procedure tomorrow morning. Sorry if you hear crying. That is my dog. If you know Dobermans, Dobermans love to whine and he's just in the mode of whining right now. But tomorrow is surgery day, so I'll be fasting in the morning. It is at 11 something and I'm supposed to be about an hour and 15 minutes or hour and 45 minutes in total the good thing is is i was in such a bad flare last week for my birthday and everything i've shared but yesterday i felt amazing just out of nowhere i felt like myself again i had energy i was able to do all the things that i wanted to do before my procedure this is the thing like i don't know if the procedure they call it a surgery procedure i don't know if it's just not going to affect me at all and i'm going to be completely fine and i'm going to feel nothing after or if it's going to affect me a lot and i'm going to be in a lot more pain than normal that's just the way it goes with my chronic illnesses unfortunately it's like a you don't know i always say this is like a guessing game i got in i found one of my clear cup guys remember i was talking about this last time you might hear my dogs right now someone just, just came home and they go a little crazy a symphony of dogs This is what it's like recording in a house with three kids, three dogs, my husband, me. Now I have two out of three dogs in my room with me. Of course, I have the big boys with me. And you guys have seen my little white dog, I think. Right now I have my two Dobermans and they're patrolling because I heard my son has friends over. Are you both crying? Were they both whining? I don't even know how much of this clip is gonna be able to be usable because of all of the shenanigans that just happened. So hopefully some of this is usable. I will keep you guys updated. I have a feeling it's just gonna go smooth and maybe I'll just be up and walking and doing my normal thing and it, I'll be completely fine. The only thing that makes me worry is when I found out I needed this procedure, they had to do they did like a they were doing something else and that caused me to have pain for like three weeks so i'm like if that's not even the surgery and it caused me pain for three weeks i'm wondering if the pain will be worse because of the surgery or oh won't be as bad because they won't be trying to force fix what's wrong I know I'm being kind of elusive here, but I I hope you get kind of what I'm trying to say. All right, I'm gonna go. I, I really have a feeling this is gonna look like chaos. <laughs>
just found out that I will not be getting the procedure today because of all my conditions and we're gonna have to reschedule because they want to do it in a surgical center just to be safe. I don't really think I need to elaborate more on that. I'm just kind of frustrated because I'm here, I woke up, my husband's not working, and of course, like my stuff is more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm processing right now, and I feel like I've wasted a lot of people's time. But rather be safe than sorry, you know? I guess. Yeah. Okay, I'll um, maybe, I think. I don't know, my mind's not, maybe I'll explain better later. So it's the next day and I think I'm ready to give an update on the appointment and what happened. I was supposed to get the surgery in office. When I met the anesthesiologist, I think I'm saying that right, she started going over my conditions and I immediately could tell that she was a little concerned and uh, a bit nervous and I started telling her all the meds I'm on and she said that she wanted to talk to the doctor before making a decision on whether or not they should do in office or not but she felt because they don't have all the necessary uh, necessary equipment like life-saving equipment in office that it would be better if I had it done in a hospital and she explained further that it's my body's not stable on it by itself and then going under it it, it not compromises it it like mimics the same thing so it makes my body slow down and I go to sleep so she was really nervous about my heart which is POTS and she was concerned about my mass cell activation because I have reactions to different things and she just didn't want something to happen and not have access to everything so then I met with the doctor and she confirmed that we were going to do it in a hospital setting and I was able to consult with her and talk about my care plan and what we're gonna do moving forward. So it, it worked out, but at, in the moment, I was really like annoyed and upset. I felt like I wasted my husband's time, my time, everyone, like my kids, I told them that, you know, I might come home and I might be tired, different things like that. So it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't, I just don't like going to the doctors already and I hate wasting time. I don't like doing things for myself. And I was like, great. But my husband is like, let's go on a little date. Like, let's make it a little, a little time for me and you to spend together since I was sick on my birthday. So we made up and we went, we like made up for my birthday and we went and got a meal and had a little date. So it turned out good. And I was really happy to be able to talk to the doctor and I let her know about Ellers downloads And she was kind of familiar with everything, which I was grateful for, but she knew like, she, it's gonna take me more time to heal. She said, usually it take like it's a quick healing process, but there are people that take up to two weeks and it sounds like that I possibly will be one of those people that it takes up to two weeks. This is supposed to be a relatively simple procedure that is now ending up to be this big deal. And I hate when things are big deal, a big deal, but my husband is so much happier and he feels a lot more at ease. And I believe me, I get it. I, I do, I get it, but I'm just like, just do whatever you gotta do and let's be done, I'll be okay. And it's really for my safety. I just really downplay a lot of what I go through. I'm not really good at like explaining how bad things really are. I, I, he, he's such a, like he's the perfect partner for me because he is like, you gotta be real with yourself here. And he talks me through a lot of this stuff because I would probably just, throw caution to the wind and be like, let's just try it anyways, you know? And he's like really protective. He's like, no, that's not what's gonna happen. When I do like the pain scale, and they're like, what's your pain scale from one to 10? And I will be where I can't move out of bed. And I can barely walk to go to the bathroom. And I'll be like, oh, maybe a five. I, I It's always like five, six. If I say eight, it's like, oh, okay, you're in pain. I, I, I'm not good at that stuff because I feel like if I'm alive, if I'm breathing, if I'm able to talk, if I'm able to move, it's not that bad. 
So that's something I definitely need to work on is being the more more okay with communicating being more realistic in my medical needs not needs my medical what's going on with me health wise they are going to call me to schedule that surgery so i have no idea when that's going to be i don't know how long it is from now anything like that all I know is that I am going to have the surgery and I will be having it by the doctor that I met with and that's it. So I will keep you guys updated. It probably won't happen in this video because it like it, it's not like I'm going to all of a sudden be getting the surgery in a, in a week, you know? But, okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. because home projects and then I did a Target pickup. I love that so many places do Target pick, like pickups. I feel like COVID really 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 helped the disability community when that started being a like a thing because all of a sudden things were accessible and easy. We didn't have to walk into a store. We can order exactly what we want stay in our car, have someone pick it up or pick it up ourselves. So it made such a big difference. Like it makes a huge difference in my life because I can order whatever I need and instead of having my husband have to go search for it, all he has to do is go pick it up in the car. So I just got, uh, like I showed you guys, but I got a few things just for the house. Nothing is for me, it's all for my family, but it was, there was like a sale. I love how this stuff smells. I don't use this on my hair, but I used to use this all the time and I mean their stuff's good I just I personally don't use it I use this brand but this is for my son not your mother's defining curl talk cream if you have curly hair I love this brand I wouldn't necessarily you can like not all the products are good for my hair I had to find what ones worked with my hair the best this one was too heavy on my hair, but it works perfectly for my 16 year old. And his hair is like tighter curls than mine. So he really likes this stuff. I heard this is freaking phenomenal and you can use it on so many other ways besides just your dishes. So I wanted to try it and I love lemon scent. It's just, I, I really love when things are cleaned with lemon scent and smell really clean like that. So I tried this. I don't know what I'm gonna try it on. I might use it on my bathroom sink. I don't know. I just, I'm really curious of how that is gonna work. I got my toothpaste. This is my favorite toothpaste, the Crest 3D White. I try the different kinds all the time. And that's it. That's all I got. But the convenience of being able to, I don't know why I keep on doing that. The convenience of being able to just go online click what I need and go pick it up and they bring it to me. It has seriously changed the game and it's been so helpful. If there's one thing that I am grateful for COVID, it's definitely making things more accessible for people that are disabled. The, the, they became more, they expanded their mind and became open-minded to curbside pickup and drive up pickup and all that stuff. There used to be very, very little amount of stores that did that. And it, it even wasn't, it was, it w was complicated to do. And once COVID happened, it became pretty seamless. I just thought I should bring that up and then I wanted to review why I got those products. Target used to be like one of my favorite places to shop. Still like going to Target, it just, I'm not as obsessed with it like I used to be. I don't know, my Target, they changed it so much and so many different remodels that it's completely different from when I used to go there often. Not only that, it's just a lot of walking, it's big. They have great stuff, but 
I'm just too tired to be in stores all the time unless it's my daughter. She usually is like, I want to go. And if she wants to go, I'll go shopping with her. And that's usually when you guys see me out is when I am with her showing you. And if I show any hauls, oh, my back is starting to hurt. So I am going to go. I actually have to make myself dinner and then I think we might do one or two of the projects that we have to do in our house. Or not me, my husband. I'll be the supervisor. <laughs> okay, I just sat down to record and my heart was at 114 just by me trying to get everything ready to sit down and talk with you guys. And wow, that's exhausting. Okay, I got it down. I actually got it down really good. It's at 88, but a minute ago it was, oh, it's at 95 again. It just feels like it's beating out of my chest. Deep breaths really do make a difference when you're struggling with your heart rate. I don't know if I'll be able to, of course, right when I go to show it. All right, I was about to show it, but it went away. If you hear anything like doom, 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 anything like that, my son is in the garage working out. You can hear it from my room pretty clearly. I first want to update you guys about my surgery. There has not been a call. There's been no change. I don't have any information. I don't know when it's gonna be, nothing. I have to wait until the office calls me and unfortunately they have not. So now it's just a waiting game. I'm okay with that. I now have a doctor that understands my condition and talked me, like we both talked through our expectations and how to take care of myself so i i'm okay i'm okay i i'd rather it be that way even though last week i was very frustrated because i did not i i felt like i was wasting people's time time it was disguised as a blessing for sure why am i struggling so hard right now to even think of what i want to say and how to say it i can't even form complete thoughts or sentences this is frustrating i don't know if i'm gonna leave this in or take it out because i think i do a good job at showing a lot of the, the difficulty of me speaking or having brain fog or whatever but i, I don't want to overdo it even though that's my life i don't know they are playing music so loud i remembered something that i wanted to show you guys when i went to the doctor they always ask for all kinds of information. Your meds you're on, your conditions that you may have, your doctor, primary doctor, just all this stuff. And I created a little kit that I carry with myself all the time. I used to carry a pretty big pouch with me. I have dwindled it down to this size. It's in a nice plastic, um, what is this called? Would this be called a pouch or a case? I don't know what this is called, but it even carries my throw bag, my pain patches, some Pepto. Like it has multi-use, but it one of the main things is it has my conditions and my insurance cards. Here, I got a, a thing. This is my actual doctor, so I have a sleeve for my cards and it has my insurance cards in here and my primary doctor that manages my care's card in here. And this is ever in case of an emergency, people need to quickly find information on me. And then I have, I made out of index cards, my conditions and I listed each condition clearly. One, it's easier just to hand this over when I'm not, when they're asking about do you have any conditions? What are your medications? I have listed daily on one side and as needed, needed on the other. I, When I went, I was able just to hand her these cards and she was able to write it all down. Because sometimes it just gets overwhelming, especially because I have 
multiple i mean you saw my conditions list it's a lot it's not like a small list that is easy to just say and yet and yes some of them are are co-illnesses but it's really important to have it easily accessible there's so many i easily forget to be like oh i have pots and mast cell activation or what out what what goes with that yeah i have insomnia you know i don't know how important each one is for the type of doctor i'm seeing but i know it plays a role that i need to let them know about i definitely would suggest doing something like this i got this little thing off of amazon i can leave a link oh no i could leave a link for it down below <laughs> what you saw just fall out was this thing little shovel well what it actually is is it's for my ear my ear had for years now it has gotten really itchy and painful and i don't want to put a cotton swab in there and sometimes my nails are long enough to just you know scratch in there but i was like this is probably a lot better for me to carry around so i carry it in there but yeah so i have all of that in this little pouch and if you want to maybe the next video i'll just quickly go and take out everything and show you guys but i definitely think it's important when you are chronically ill to be very organized that way nothing gets left out information is so important to share and give the correct amount that you you, you can't leave it up to just your memory other than that i've been just relaxing i been coloring like usual i got I, my anxiety shot through the roof after my appointment and so i really colored a lot i finished another page i actually finished two i can show you the other one too this helps me so much when i am anxious i would love to know what you guys do someone told commented that they do puzzles i love that like my husband he exercises when he's anxious i don't have that option so i would love to know what other people do besides what i do but this is the one that i just finished last night Another thing actually that I do is a journal and my husband got me the oh my god okay so I got a journal I had it on a haul a few months ago and I'm almost done with it maybe 20 pages left to write in it I write very often and my husband found the most beautiful journal for me to use next time look at how gorgeous this is I don't know if you can see that it's like a gold like the sleeves are gold. I feel so fancy. It's so pretty. This is the kind of stuff like I love. It makes a difference to me when I am writing in something beautiful about what's going on in my life. I've journaled since I was 12 years old and I've, this is, uh, what a good find. I love it. Other than that, I've just been home relaxing. I. Uh, have had the urge to redecorate change up some stuff in my house i don't know what because i'm gonna be decorating for fall and then christmas and then i'll be, have regular home decor up again so maybe i'll just st slowly start like stockpiling some stuff i just i always get these little urges and i think it's really because i'm home so much you, let me know if you guys are like this being home so much do you get urges to redecorate more often and change up your environment because i do i like to just make it me and comfortable in my oasis so now i'm like oh I, i'm i have a new thing i'm on the hunt i'm looking facebook marketplace what what's there even though <laughs> Even though I usually don't even buy from Facebook Marketplace because it requires going to pick it up and everything. And like, I can't put more on my husband's plate, but it's fun to look Pinterest and like getting ideas of where, where I'm going to decorate and stuff like that. I love it. Or I'll find like an area to reorganize. Last weekend, I totally reorganized our linen closet, which it desperately needed. So that felt good. I still have like two shelves to clean up but in order to do that i have to go through something out it's like i have to do something else so i can move that there and this there and it's a whole puzzle piece and i haven't done the first thing to get to the other steps so yeah 
that is all guys. I have been actually feeling pretty good. I do have my regular pain in my tailbone and I'm and obviously you saw at the beginning I was experiencing POTS symptoms, but I am managing and that's all I can ask is to manage. The hardest thing is when I cannot get a grasp on what's going on and there's no concept of like, okay, if I do this, then this happens. It, when it's all just acting up and in complete chaos, it's really hard to have no control whatsoever, even with medication. And that's all. I hope you guys are feeling okay. If not, I'm sending you gentle hugs and hopefully you'll feel some relief soon. I hope you guys have a good day or night. Take care. Bye.